Next up, we have Mithra Resources and John Skeet, who's the Managing Director and CEO. Now, Mithra Resources, ladies and gentlemen, sit up, take some notice. These guys are working in Mexico, and I want you to understand that Mexico is a very exciting jurisdiction. John's going to share why, and uh, I, I really think this is a very, very interesting area. John, welcome to the Virtual Gold Conference. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Kerry. Thanks for having me on. Let's talk about this Coppelquin Mining District because um, this, uh, some of what you're doing at the moment is pretty exciting. Yes, well, look, it's the first, um, it's the first drill program that we've, um, that's been undertaken by us in, uh, in Mexico. There's, there was some prior drilling by um, some junior explorers in the, in the late 90s, but um, this is really the first uh, serious modern campaign of drilling. We, we did our maiden built drill program last year. We completed that um, on time and on budget. We actually did a bit extra. We did about seven, just over 7,000 metres of uh, diamond drilling. And, um, and then we started again in January this year and we've, uh, we've progressed considerably our understanding of the district and we've, um, we've now centred on, on, uh, on a couple of, um, of important areas there where we're now getting some very, some very good results and very good um, size to the structures that we're, that we, we're exploring. So let's have a look at this area that you're exploring, John. All right. So just oh uh, yes, the important disclaimer. Read that very quickly, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. So and then it, yeah. So I just I just like to introduce first, you know, where the project is in Mexico, and and really this slide is to highlight um, what a mature and well developed mining industry is currently in Mexico. It's very vibrant. Um, there's a lot of Canadian uh, juniors and majors exploring there. It is a very, um, you know, prolific uh, silver district all through Mexico, central Mexico, and then where we are is in the is in the gold silver trend uh, through the Sierra Madre Occidental um, mountain range. So all the way through there, you can see there's there's several um, multi billion dollar market cap um, North American explorers, uh, Fresneo, which is on the listed on the London Stock Exchange. Uh, they just developed the San Julian uh, silver uh, mine to not far from Copalkin. And up, up there in the north of the trend is Grupo Mexico with, um, with the third largest uh, copper mine in the world. And then, of course, over here at, uh, at Newmont Gold Corp, a $64 billion market cap company who's uh, currently producing gold and silver from, um, from the Peñasquito uh, operation. Yeah, John, so John a, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, your market cap is forty million, I believe. Is that correct? That's right. Yep. We're and a, and we're you are a, surrounded by giants who are market caps of in the billions of dollars. Yeah. Um, is the district? Is the area that you're in? Uh, I I'd just like to understand how you came across. Why this area? And is it along the same sort of structure? Um, are you looking for, is it mainly silver with, with high grade gold? What's, what's yes, your understanding of why here? It's a, it is a silver district all the way through there. So typically, you know, on average, the, the, the silver to gold ratios, there are around, um, around 50 to 100 to 1. Where we are, we, we've got different, um, different in the, in the Coppelkin district, we've got probably 50 different um, historic mines and, and workings that have been there since, um, since the mid 1800s. And uh, so all the way through there, they do vary in their in their gold to silver ratios. We find that when um, uh, when the, when the gold uh, that when there's a very high gold grades there, the silver the silver ratio to gold is is a lot lower. But generally, it's um, it averages around about fifty over the whole district, fifty to one uh, silver to gold ratio. So we're we're fortunate that we do have high grade gold occurrences in the district, and we've encountered those um, you know numerous times with our you know during our drilling. Uh, campaigns there, and um, and uh, really all these uh, a lot of these companies like um, sorry I just I just skipped the slide. If uh, if you look at Pan American Silver and First Majestic, those companies they pretty much started in Mexico. They were they were junior companies, and they uh, they they found company maker projects, and they just expanded from there, and they've been there you know for the long term. So the Mithril team has worked extensively in Mexico over the last um, twenty five to thirty years. Um, our chief geologist, Hall Stewart, has worked there since the early 90s, and um, he has a huge amount of experience in the district and understands these epithermal gold-silver systems very well. And, um, and also our board, myself, you know, we've been working there since the, since the early 2000s with um, Palmareco, which was 
with Bonisi Gold and uh, with um, Serra Resources that had the, um, the San Anton project in near Guanajuato in central Mexico. Yeah, so you understand Mexico very well. And for those people that are, are, are a little bit, I don't know, not concerned, but they don't really understand Mexico, as a jurisdiction, is the government supportive of mining? Are there any challenges? Because, I mean, I've, I've been to Acapulco, I've been to Mexico City, loved it. But, and I found it very safe. Are there any challenges? Because some people will go, oh, Mexico, that's a little bit scary. But it's... It, it's pretty good, isn't it? It is. It's a great country to work in. I mean, I've I've, um, I've loved working there the last uh, the last uh, twenty years or so, and um, I've never had any any problems there at all. And and of course, there's like any country, uh, there's different places, and you might go and you you have to just be careful, and you know you don't you don't travel at night in some areas, and and uh, you just in big cities, you just um, you know you just you just stick to the the well lit areas, just like in any in any country. Just like in uh, Australia. <laughs> yes, but but Mexico is um, you know the, it's, the mining is it's a resource rich country and uh, the you know the Mexican government understands how important it is to the economy and the investment dollars that come in and the the job creation and um, and the taxes they collect from it all. Um, they've got a, they've got a good mature tax system there. It's it's fair and and equitable and. Um, and uh, you know the, the the employer employees' rights are very are very strong. So um, you know the labour force is uh, is is well developed, and um, and there's a lot of geologists, a lot of geologists, a lot of um, professional people come out of the universities in Mexico, well qualified. So it's it really is a great country to work, and um, you know we've never been left you know wanting for anything there. Um, there are a lot of contractors. Our drilling contractor is probably the best drilling contractor I've worked with anywhere. And um, they're doing a great job for us. Okay. So the Coppelquin uh, district, it's quite large, isn't it? Because, you know, it's a black dot there at the moment. For those people that are watching, um, you've done a very successful maiden drill program. Uh, that's finished. Where are you now with drilling and what's next for the news flow? Okay, so look, I'll just go to the next the next slide here. This is just part of the district. So it's seven thousand hectares or seventy square kilometers of um, of area that's covered by mining mining concessions that have been uh, granted by the Mexican government, and we have a, we have the option to purchase those one hundred percent with our exploration work there. So these uh, these two lines that you can see there, they're just they're like long sections. So like we've taken a slice through through the property to look at where we've been drilling. It shows the, shows the point where the drill hole pierced the, um, the structure and then, um, and, and then you know, a colour coding which gives the uh, approximate grade of what we intercept. But um, this is quite the, probably the main area that we've, we've, uh, we've got onto in the district. And uh, the next slide shows the northern line, which is um, a bit shorter, but it's over a kilometre wide. And um, those those dots there, those purple dots, are the are the very high grades that we've intercepted. So our first hole we drilled, we intercepted three meters, at just over an ounce of gold per ton, and three thousand grams per ton uh, silver. That was a very high grade intercept. Um, some people might think that's a bit narrow, three three meters, but that's um, you know that's a good width to mine underground, and um, and it's, it's you know being particularly high grade means that. The uh, the capital development um, cost for for something like this uh, to get a to get a good um, production of ounces is very is very low compared to a, a big low grade um, type deposit. So we're we're looking for a very high grade underground mineable um, uh, uh, resources here. So and and for those that are listening as well, look the higher the grade, the less dirt you have to move. The less dirt you have to move, the less cost there is. And so you're moving, the higher the grade, the better off. With John, in simple terms, that's correct, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, particularly with the capital costs, you know, you don't have to build a, a plant that can, that's capable of, of um, processing tens of thousands of tonnes per day, looking at, um, you know, maybe 1,000 or 2,000 tonnes per day. And, um, and the capital payback on something like that with these high grades would be, you know, we're, we're always looking for something that's less than 12 months capital payback. That's, that's uh, a key for us. And then the next line through there is the main part of the um, of the deposit that we've drilled so far, and that slice is about um, two and a half kilometres long, and uh, you can see here again we've 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 sent it in on this what are called clavos or high grade 
four shoots and um and in there we've had a number of good good intercepts and uh, these yellow dots here are the are the drill holes that we've we've uh, completed recently and those samples are in with the lab and we're expecting results from those um fairly soon and then uh, and then these blue holes are the uh, resource definition uh, drill drill holes that we are we're planning to drill over the next uh, the next couple of months so um but these are uh, these orange and um and green and and purple are, are the are the, are the good drill results that we've uh, received so far from the drilling last year and then since we've been drilling in January this year. So all these all these magenta ones are, are very high grades. Uh, hole 50, which we released um, uh, back in March, we had um, yeah, four, just over four metres at over two ounces of gold per tonne and uh, 444 grams of silver per tonne. So we're we're very happy to see these extremely high grades, and um, and we we have a we've devised a, um, our drill plan to to, uh, to to continue to um to expand this part of the deposit. John, has that surprised you to the upside? Those grades that you're finding. I mean, because you've worked in Mexico for many many years, so you know you know Mexico, you know the sorts of grades. But I'm just curious as a as a potential investor that you know as is is this giving you a bit of a smile on your face these sorts of grades or were you expecting this because of the, the district you're in yes we we were we were expecting them we're we're a bit surprised at how high some of the gold grades are in relation to the silver so in particularly in this refugio district or part of the district but the um but uh, you know, certainly we we're expecting. You know, we've done soil sampling, and we we um we just measure sort of background levels of of silver in the soils, and then from that we can determine whether we've got uh, there's a good probability of a of some some sort of resources down deeper. So, like over here at Los Pinos, we we're, we're going to drill that next month, and um, you know we had a very strong when we sampled the soils on the grid pattern, we found a very we found some very high silver levels in the soils. And you know, combined with the geology and all the mapping we've done there, we, we've identified this as being a very strong, um, uh, a very strong exploration target. And and it was um, this one was a bit more difficult to locate in that in that method, but it was because of the ex the um, the historic mining that was all the way through there um, at Refugio uh, in the eight, late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, that we knew that this was uh, an important part of the district to be to be starting our um, exploration activities. So there was when a multi-level mine that was developed there, and um, and a, a quite an extensive processing facility was built downstream from there. Back in the eighteen nineties, everything was brought in by mule, and um, they had uh, they were processing uh, from the engineering and mining journal um, the reports. They were um, processing some very high grade material. So we were. We were anticipating, you know, to find these ore shoots. We may we're looking for we're looking to find multiple ore shoots along the whole um, the width of the district there, and that's what we'll be doing with our, ex, our systematic exploration. Um, John, when you talk about the historical mining, um, obviously no modern mining methods. Were they just uh, mining very shallow ore at that point and taking it out? Uh, no, they were they were underground developments. And as you can see there through through that long section, you can see you know it's fairly it's fairly steep terrain, and um, mm. you know that, that's a that's a couple of hundred meters you know from the peak there down to here. But you know the the um, from an exploration point of view, it makes it uh, it makes it more challenging. But from uh, a mining perspective, it, it was um, they were able to build multi level mines just taking advantage of the uh, topography there so they're just just um, constructing tunnels going into the side of the of the ridges and then um, and then going up from there and, and taking out the, uh, the the various um mineralized zones that they they found just from driving in with their underground habits so how did you come across this project because um if it hasn't really had anybody on it since what the early 1900s uh, it did have two companies do some exploration work. So there was one uh, one company, a Canadian junior, that uh, did some exploration work at the late nineties, just when Briex uh, fiasco yeah. occurred and the um, and the severe depression in the gold price. So they they only did one campaign of drilling. They got some exceptionally good results, and that was part of the reason that why we were, we got excited about this particular project when when we did come across it. And then, um, and then there was another Canadian junior that did some work in the mid, early to mid two thousands, and they um, they uh, they got into trouble with another project they had that they were trying to get into production, and they um, 
they went into uh, into receivership and then um and then that made the project sit there for quite some quite a number of years with a contract registered on the concessions and no one was able to really um you know to do a to do anything with it for quite some time so um by the time we came along there was a bit more legal clean up to do on the concessions plus um there was quite a bit of tax owed to the mexican government so we we worked with the vendor who who'd held the concessions for about 40 years or so um oh wow and um you know and he he understood the value of them and he wasn't going to let them go and um and um so we um you know through a mutual contact we got uh, we got introduced and um and we went and worked with him to um and with our lawyers to work out how we would get this um um you know to to a stage where we could put it into a public company so that that was all done at the private company level with with our um, the predecessor sun minerals and then yeah. by the time we got it all legally sorted and and cleaned up we were then in a, in a position then to get it into a public vehicle on the on the stock exchange and then get some uh, some serious funding for the exploration program is he still involved at all uh yeah he's an he's uh he's our number 10 shareholder so he um he participated in in uh in our second fundraising so he put uh, he put a lot of his of his uh, of his own money into it and he's uh, he's one of our major shareholders now so oh that's good to know so he's he's actually put some some funds into this as well yeah, that's right yeah okay so um, yeah, so so as far as the news flow goes for the next um, the next uh, the next couple of months, we've got some um, we've got as I mentioned before, we've got these uh, these drill holes with these yeah where these yellow dots are showing there to to come in. This will give us some valuable information as to how this structure is progressing to the to the uh, to the west. Everything we're observing in the core is um, the minerals and the um, and the geology is. Is showing that we're in we're in the top of a you know a large system, and um, and it's you know in, in in some of these areas it's telling us to drill deeper, and um, as we found here we drilled deeper we got better better um, grade thickness I guess if you if you multiply the the the, the intercept times the grade you know that gives you an indication of the the grade thickness which is what we've um, which is on the scale here so we've we've got a couple more holes planned down deeper and then we've got some very deep holes. Which we're going to be very interested to see how they come out. So um, it is it's uh, it's early days exploration still, but we we have um, we've defined a you know a, a significant um, system there that we um, you know we're, we're we're certain is going to lead to um, you know a good a good amount of, of uh, gold and silver resources. Um, and then we've got the whole district to explore. You know, with this is just one part of it. Um, we've got several other areas that that look geologically as still as as um as strong as this one, and um you know and, and as we're progressing the drilling, we're understanding more and more that you know this is a long lived system, um and you know there's um there's been multiple mineralization events, and um, you know we just need to keep at it and um and keep uh, getting the successes we're getting, and um and and for the uh, people in the market and potential investors to see that, um, you know, this is a good, um, you know, short to medium term, um, you know, uh, silver, silver gold play. Uh, in terms of, of, of timing, and I, I often say this because <clears throat> we have a number of people on here. I mean, I know that Keith Good's watching. Uh, he understands all this, but we've also got people that are looking to invest and need to understand it a little bit more. So, in terms of a time frame and news flow, this is not, ladies and gentlemen, this is not going to be a short-term turnaround. This needs a lot of work to understand the ge geology around this. But what John is pointing out to you is that there is high-grade mineralisation that they're finding, uh, but there's a lot more work. So, John, if you could just outline sort of the time frame for the next lot of news flow for uh, current investors and also potential new investors. Okay. Well, look, we've got um, we'll be completing this this next phase of our drilling um, during the next probably by the end or of next month or two. We're going into June, and then we plan to have a a, a short a short um, short break there of a couple of weeks while we um, we get all our assays in. So over that period, over the next um, the next six weeks, we expect a good news flow of um, of how we've developed on this part of the property. And then um, for here, we, we're looking to to do a um, a preliminary um, resource estimate. So it'll be an inferred, largely an inferred resource estimate, but it'll give a, 
a bit of a feel for the grades and, and the size that we've drilled so far. And then we will use that then to sort of look at how we're going to develop these other exploration targets in the in the district. So so it, that that will be um, probably about the middle of uh, middle of next uh, of the of the second half of the year that we'll have that resource estimate come out. So um, so we've got um, really over the next three three to four months we've got some good news flow coming through from the project. All right, John, we have run out of time. I've just realised I got so excited about your project. I've realised that uh, we are out of time, sir. Uh, let's get that last slide so that we can um, get your contact details for people that are out there. <clears throat> if they want to get in touch with you, there's John's contact details. This will be up on our YouTube channel uh, in the near future. John Skeet, thank you so much for joining us on the virtual golf conference today. Gary, thanks for your time. It's a pleasure. ABC Bullion, the Australian Bullion Company. Trading since 1972, ABC Bullion is Australia's largest independent bullion dealer and precious metals depository. Fully insured and verified by independent audit. ABC Bullion offers a range of proprietary investment products and storage solutions at Australia's first gold and silver accumulation plan. ABC Bullion.